Hi everyone, Paul LaFever here. I'm going to show you how to use your Raspberry Pi with Zojo. Okay, what we're going to do now is create a simple LED circuit. This will allow us to have a Zojo app that can turn the LED on or off. All right, so here are all the pieces we're going to need. I have my Raspberry Pi over here, breadboard over here. They are connected with a ribbon cable. Uh, the ribbon cable is connected to the GPIO port on the Pi and it is connected here to the breadboard using a cobbler and that essentially takes the wires from the GPIO port that are routed through the ribbon cable and separates them out onto the breadboard so they are easy to work with. These are the parts we're going to need here. Three wires, one LED, and one 10K resistor. So we'll start with the longer wire and this needs to be connected to pin number four on the GPIO. Now I can use any of the pins in the any of the holes in the row that match the pin. So there's a there's a few there to choose from, but I can just choose whichever one's easier. And I can route the wire over to an open part of the breadboard. There we go. Now I'm going to take the LED. And if you look at an LED, let me straighten it out here. Look carefully at it, you're going to see that one end is slightly longer than the other end. The longer end is the positive end of the LED, and that's the part we're going to want to connect to the wire. So let's just spread this out a little so it might be a little easier to plug in. So I want the longer end to be adjacent to the wire. And to make something adjacent, you put it on the same row, as all the, the items on each row are connected. So I can just slide it in here beside the wire on that row. And then I can take the other end and I can just plug it onto any open any open spot on the board here. So I just put it down a hole or two. Shove it down in there so the connections reach. So now the LED is hooked up. Next one is the resistor. This connects to the negative pin of the LED, so it has to be on the same row as it. And then this can just be run across the board to an open spot, like so. Now we can continue the circuit by something adjacent here and just need, we just need to go to ground at this point. So we're just trying to get to ground. So my wire here is connecting to the, the ground uh, column, I guess, of the breadboard. And anything plugged into that column is connected and its purpose is for you to have easy way to ground things. So now I can connect this wire to the ground column and I can connect it to a ground pin on the port, like so. So that's it. That's the circuit. It's pretty simple. Uh, but we can test it real quick before we write Zojo code by connecting it directly to power. So I can unplug the pin here from pin number four, which is a programmable pin, and I can connect it directly to the very first pin, which is it's marked as 3V3, which is a 3.3 volt uh, power. And when I plug it in there, you can see the LED turns on and stays on because it's getting power. But for our Sojo test, we actually want to be able to control that, so let's put it back where it was. Get that out of there and put it back onto the pin mark number four. Okay, now we're going to create the Zojo project to control our LED circuit. So the first thing we need is the GPIO module that will be used to communicate with the GPIO port. So you can do that right here. I have Zojo running already. It's at the project chooser. I've selected examples and the GPIO project is in the platform specific folder. So we'll go there, we'll go to Linux, Raspberry Pi, and then here it is, GPIO. Let's open that. And this is the project that contains the module we want. So we're just gonna copy that and then create a new project. And this will be a console project. And now we have the project here. We can paste in the GPIO module so that we can use it. And now the first thing we do, this is a console project, so we need to add the run event handler here so we can put some code in. And our code is going to be pretty straightforward. Uh, we're just going to set up the GPIO, so we'll call that. We're going to create a constant for the pin we're going to be used, which is number four. That's the one we, uh, we initially connected up everything to. We can then set the pin mode to accept output. 
And then we can just have a, a loop that just turns uh, the, uh, the LED on and off about once every half second. And we'll just do this forever. So we're going to write, to turn it on, we write to the output and we send it uh, essentially a one, which is that constant, gpio.on. And that'll wait about a half a second, and then we can turn it back off. And that's it. There's our, our simple little while loop. So this is uh, pretty straightforward. Just going to be an infinite while loop that's going to repeatedly turn the pin on and off. And because of our circuit, that will have the effect of turning the LED on and off. Now next we would need to build this so we can get it over to the Raspberry Pi. So here I will click down here in the build settings. I'm going to turn off this computer. I'm going to turn on Linux. And I'm going to change the architecture here to tell it to build for ARM. And that's it. Then I can hit the build button and let that build. I will then take that resulting build and transfer it over to my Raspberry Pi. You can do that either using a USB drive or FTP, whatever works for you. And then we'll run it on the Pi and see what it looks like. Okay, now I've transferred our LED blinker app over to my Raspberry Pi, and I'm going to run it. So first I need to connect to the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna do that using SSH. And I left the default username of Pi, so I will just put that in as and point it to the address it has on my network. I will log in. And now I can just switch to the location containing the app. And now I can run the app. Generally, you're going to want to use sudo if your app is using the GPIO. But if you do have newer versions of Raspbian, the Raspberry Pi OS, that can be optional if you have the right uh, configuration set up. You can check our docs online at Dev Center all right developer.zojo.com that's our dev center for on how to do that and you can see now that i'm running the app you can see that the led is blinking and i can quit the app to stop it from blinking as you can see making zojo apps for raspberry pi is super easy grab zojo today from zojo.com and start making your own raspberry pi apps in just minutes <laughs>